Let's go! In case you missed it, there's been some fud about Tether going around over the last week after a senior official at the US Federal Reserve called it a challenge to financial stability and a new disruptor to short-term credit markets. So we've been seeing all of this fud about Tether, but I do think that this is an important time to take a look at what Tether actually is, how it works, why there always seems to be some drama or concerns about it, and what would happen if the people spreading the FUD ended up being right and someday Tether do lose its peg to the dollar or even go to zero. So that is what we are going to be covering in this video today guys. So if you like this type of content then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell so you do not miss out on more videos like this in the future as well as everything else I post here on the channel. So to start off with, I think we all understand the need for stable coins such as Tether within the crypto ecosystem. Without them, if someone wanted to take profit or keep the value of their portfolio steady between trades, then they would need to cash out all the way to USD or some other fiat currency. Not only does that usually take a considerable amount of time, but it can also have extra fees associated with it. We can easily tell how big of a role stablecoin play by looking at this page on CoinGecko that shows them all. As you can see here, stablecoins have a combined market cap of more than $110 billion, which is more than 7% of the total crypto market cap. Additionally, almost every day, Tether is the top coin traded by volume by a very large margin. One more interesting thing we can take a look at here is the chart of the market cap of stablecoins over time. So the blue line here is Tether, and as you can see, it was growing slowly up until the start of April in 2020 when it had this spike and then continued on a parabolic growth path. Some people who see how much Tether has been minted over the last year say that it is because Tether is used to manipulate the crypto markets, but if we look at the chart, we can see that pretty much every stablecoin has seen a very significant increase in market cap during the same time period. So it is more likely that that increase has been caused by demand increasing as crypto grows in general. One question that a lot of people have is how does Tether maintain its peg to the price of $1? After all, if it could not maintain that peg, then there could be a huge issue, which I will get into in a minute. So the peg is maintained by having the value of every USDT token in circulation 100% backed by the Tether reserves. Many people think that these reserves are made up of an equivalent amount of US dollars to the number of USDT tokens. That is not actually the case, which is where some of the FUD frequently comes from. So let's talk about the Tether reserves. What are they actually backing the USD dollar peg to? Well, the reserves include some cash along with cash equivalents and occasionally other assets and receivables from loans made by Tether to third parties. So if you are unfamiliar with them, cash equivalents are short-term investment securities with high liquidity and low risk such as treasury bills, certificates of deposits, bankers' acceptances, corporate commercial paper, and other money market instruments. After so much FUD about whether or not the reserves were worth as much as the USDT tokens in circulation, Tether eventually started publishing a public proof of funds report that can be seen at any time right here on their website. With that in place, it is easy to see that it is unlikely that USDT will ever deviate very far from its peg, although it has in the past. Right here in July, the price of USDT went all the way to $1.32 and in March of 2015, it went to as low as almost half a dollar. One method Tether uses to help secure its peg other than just holding an equivalent value in its reserves is through open market operations. For example, if the price were to hit $1.01, then they would let an entity such as an exchange sell USDT to them until the price went back down to $1. On the other side of things, if the price went down to let's say 99 cents, then they would let the exchange buy USDT from them until the price went back up to $1. So 
The exchanges and other entities that take part in this profit from this small arbitrage opportunity. And also, of course, it helps to keep Tether steady, so it's beneficial to everyone involved. So I think you can all see now that the likelihood of Tether imploding and going to zero is very small, but there will always be the possibility of some weird, unlikely scenario causing it to happen, such as if Tether were banned in a bunch of different countries or something else like that. So if that were to happen, what would happen to crypto in general? To answer simply, well, the answer is complicated, but in the long run, it would not matter. In the short term, one out of two things could happen. So the first thing is that we could see crashes, huge crashes from the FUD, but also from the liquidations, both on centralized exchanges and in DeFi, because USDT is used as collateral for billions of dollars worth of leverage trades, as well as for loans from protocols such as Aave, Compound and Maker. But the other thing, and to actually explain this a bit more, if all of that collateral were suddenly worthless, then those positions would be liquidated. That would mean a lot of forced selling, which would drive prices down to the point where even more liquidations would occur and so on. However, once the market stabilized and people had time to recover, other stablecoins would take that place of Tether, whether that be USDC or another centralized coin or even maybe a decentralized coin such as DAI. The other thing is that if we really do see a situation where you know, a lot of people are not trusting Tether anymore. It's starting to go off peg. Well, as people start to sell that Tether, maybe they are going to get into other cryptos. Maybe if they start selling a lot of Tether, you know, they want to get out of Tether. Well, the most logical thing to do would be to maybe get into another stable coin, but there's not really that much liquidity if you compare the rest of the stable coins to Tether. So the other option would be to go to crypto, to Bitcoin, to Ethereum and other coins. And that could mean that the prices would short term see a big, big spike. So one out of two things could happen. So that's just some speculation for you. But before I end this video, I want to share a project with you all, and that is Port Network. So this video was sponsored by Port Network. So huge thank you to, to the team over there. So Port Network combines volunteer computing and cloud computing in a new system that allows anyone to allocate their free and unused resources and be rewarded with Port Tokens. A lot of the time, people only use about 20% of their reserve power, which means that there's a lot of potential power sitting around not being used. Port Network combines all of that unused power in one place and allows anyone who needs some extra power to borrow it by paying a fee in Port Tokens. Speaking of port tokens, the ICO is currently ongoing and is using a unique phase system to make it more fair. During each of the 50 phases, the price paid for tokens will increase slightly, meaning that the earlier you get involved, the cheaper your entry price will be. Currently, the price per token is 21 cents and the ICO is available directly on the port website if any of you are interested in checking that out. The tokenomics of the port token are shown here along with its distribution. The token gains its value from its utility of being used to pay for server storage and because it is used to pay out rewards to people offering their extra power in space. There is a strong team behind this project which is shown here and they are actually a registered company in Germany which helps to give them more credibility. The details of that company are shown here. Another way to earn with Port Network is by referring friends. So anytime someone you refer makes a purchase, you will receive 20% in commission and the friend will receive a 10% commission as well. So it is mutually beneficial. If we take a look at the roadmap, we can see that after the end of the token sale, the market launch of the software will occur in quarter four. Next year, they have marketing campaigns planned along with prominent partnerships and an expansion of press activities. So make sure to check this out. Check the links down in the description. They got a lot of press as well. You got articles on Yahoo. So make sure to check this out and I will see you in the next one.